Now this week we have some very basic supermarket flowers. Come and join me and we'll create a design just like this. Today's design is part of our supermarket flower series where I'm showing you how you can create some really simple and easy design using some supermarket flowers. Now this week I have a bunch from Morrison's, so if you're here in the UK, you can pop out and buy a bouquet. It's called Diva and it cost me £8. I actually bought two bouquets because I've used them in a video that you're going to see in a couple of weeks time. And in that bouquet, or in each bouquet, were three cerise coloured gerbera. And I was particularly attracted to these because the colour is quite striking and very vibrant. There was also some foliage and there was a palm leaf in there as well, but I didn't feel the palm leaf was an appropriate foliage to use in this particular design. So I'm keeping that for something different. So we had foliage and then there was a variety of chrysanthemums of different shapes and colours. And I've picked out the ones that I prefer to use today. So there were a couple of different colours um, and I also bought an extra bunch of gypsophilia which is going to fill in and cover any areas that I haven't got quite enough flowers for. There was also a very small daisy chrysanthemum in there, really pretty delicate flower. I've got this chrysanthemum that is almost like a spider and this is what we call Sheena or Dalian in the florist industry and then I have the darker purple and another small daisy croissant. And the bunches were slightly different in the variety on colours that you had of the chrysanthemums, but each bunch had three of these gorgeous, vibrant gerbera. And that's going to create my sort of focal point and the interest within my design. Um, and remembering that I'm using two bunches to get me enough of the gerberas that I'd like to use. Now this is going to be a good design for the, those of you that can't get hold of any foliage. I know it's really difficult when you're at home and you haven't got a garden or you haven't got anybody to help you with foliage. And this is where it's really beneficial if you can find a bouquet that has some foliage included in the bouquet itself. Now my container has also come from a high street store. Now again, if you're here in the UK, and apologies to the ones that aren't in the UK, one thing that's really fascinating me is that the majority of the subscribers to the channel aren't from the UK. I'm not quite sure why. My highest concentration comes from the United States of America and the smaller percentage comes from the UK. So maybe somebody can explain that to me. Do you not like my style of arranging here in the UK? Who knows? So this little terracotta bowl or terracotta container has come from what we refer to as the pound shop. So you can guess it cost me one pound and it's not waterproof. Terracotta, as you probably know, is porous. If you don't have a pound shop, any type of container is almost the size of my hand in depth. If you've got a garden center, you might be able to pick up something similar and it's an all around shape. So what I'm anticipating doing is a round design that would maybe sit in the center of your table. This is a great one for beginners because you don't need a lot of material. If you don't have a dish like this, maybe consider a casserole bowl that you would have in the house. And that would be ideal for a design for the center of a table, whether it's your dining table or whether it's a small console table. And because it's not waterproof i've used a piece of cellophane just to make sure that the floral foam doesn't leak out into the terracotta and then that means the terracotta almost siphons the water out of the floral foam and i am using green floral foam so not as environmentally friendly as it could be but again i quite often repeat this i know that lots of you struggle to get hold of any materials that are more environmentally friendly so what I'm going to do now is just cut the top of that cellophane off so that I have none of that cellophane protruding out of my arrangement. And I won't talk when I'm doing this because it's a bit noisy. Now, if you don't have cellophane like I have, a black plastic bag, a carrier bag, some cling film even, even some kitchen foil will help you waterproof the container. And you can see that my floral foam is below the level of the terracotta pot. 
and that means that I won't have a huge amount of floral foam to cover at the end. If you raise the floral foam above the container, it means you have far more to cover and you get a much denser, far heavier design at the end. Now I'm not going to make too much of a formal design, so I'm not going to worry too much about having my gerbres equally spaced out in the arrangement. And if you're new to floral design, then I'm going to link in the cards just above here, the Back to Basic series, and that will help you understand the basic shapes of floral design. Um, today what I'm going to do is use the gerbras almost grouped together and you'll see that I've angled them out from the centre so we're not straight up, we're coming out from the centre and I've grouped them together but with the heads at different positions so they're not perfectly matching. We don't want to do this type of effect where the heads are pointing in the same direction. That becomes almost quite artificial and it isn't a natural way that flowers grow in the garden. And I know that if some of you struggle with symmetry and you like balance and you like matching flowers on either side, to create an informal design like this can be a little bit tricky because you want to have those flowers perfectly matching on either side. Okay, so we've got sort of two placements in there. And if I turn it around so you can see the back section, we have a large area here that doesn't have any of the bright pink colour of the gerbera. And it's a gorgeous round shape. And considering different shapes, different textures within your design is also really quite important. And often when we do flower arranging and we do grand tall designs, we go twice the height of our container to give us the height that we need but for today's arrangement it's a small delicate little posy that's going to sit on a small console table so i've almost got on the same shape and the same height as my container so if you imagine that container being turned upside down on the top that's roughly the height and the size that i'm trying to achieve now we're going to use some of the eucalyptus and if I put it in in this size and style it's really quite overpowering for my arrangement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into really short little pieces. So I've got myself five or six pieces out of that one stem and the beauty with this type of arranging is if you're at home and you're arranging just for pleasure at home you could have them in the vase for a couple of days where you use the foliage at their full length. You can have it just in a glass vase, sitting on your windowsill. And then when the flowers start to become a little bit jaded and they're starting to fade, you can cut them shorter and use them in an arrangement just like this. So you almost get double the value of your flowers. So you'll see with this tall stem, I'm going to cut it in several places just underneath or on top of even where the gap is in the stem. So where the leaves start to come out of the main rib, I'm just cutting it on the top there. Beautiful smell of eucalyptus as you cut into the stem. But this is going to give me six or seven little pieces of the eucalyptus and I'm going to just dot them all through the middle. No particular placement just so that we cover as much of the floral foam and we introduce a different shape and a different texture into the arrangement and quite quickly we've got a really pretty design starting to take place gorgeous colors that um, gray tone alongside the pink is really quite spectacular now i'm going to introduce some jib and quite often, jip is the last thing that I put into a design. But because I almost want the materials grouped together, I'm going to place it in as if it's a flower rather than a filler flower. Now, we tend to refer to anything that's soft and fluffy like this as a filler flower. And as the word says, it fills a gap. Gypsophilia, September flower or solidaster even work really well as um, almost like a cloud over the top of the flowers. But what sometimes happens is you overfill with the soft filler flower and then you lose the characteristic shape that you've worked really hard 
on designing. So what I'm doing is rather than covering the whole arrangement with gypsophilia, I'm doing little pockets and little clusters of the foliage. Again, if we think about the texture, that white, soft, delicate texture alongside the big, robust gerbera works really, really well together. And it introduces a softness and a really pretty, interesting colour and shape. When in the middle, not perfectly in the middle, and then just this last section on the side here to fill in. And if you don't have gypsophilia, you might have some more foliage that you can get hold of from your garden, or it could be another flower type. So if you select a mixed bunch in the supermarket and you don't think it's quite gonna fill all the spaces, maybe pick something to go with it, like a bunch of roses, or some tulips at this time of the year. But you'll see there how those two color combinations work together. And you could, if you had another bunch of gerbera and just gypsophilia, just continue in that same manner until you've run out of flowers. Now I'm gonna start introducing some more colors and more textures. And as I've only got one of this little chrysanthemum, I'm going to put this in the center of my design but I'm not going to stand it directly upright because sometimes that can almost look like a big cherry on the top of your cake. So I'm going to angle it slightly to one side and then it doesn't look quite so dominant and quite so obvious on the top of the arrangement. And we've got some fabulous colours working there together. Now my next stem of chrysanthemum is quite large. So what I'm going to do with this one is use it in two separate parts. So I'm gonna cut it roughly in the middle so we end up with two stems from that one main stalk. I'm roughly the same size as my scissors or if I compare it to my hand, roughly the same size as my hand. And that's the same sort of size that we're going to be cutting the remainder of the flowers. And you can see it tucks in really nicely there on the side. This whole piece, as it is, is going to be far too tall added into the design in that length. So this time, I'm going to take off the heads. Again, I have three, four heads as opposed to the one stem. And I can now introduce them. And I'm grouping everything together. I'm not going to dot them out throughout the arrangement. I'm going to add them in together. So we've got far more impact. And this is what we would refer to as a grouped and textured floral design. So we have lovely dominant sections of the flowers. One little stem here on its own. And this, this next bunch or next stem that I'm going to use is the same variety of chrysanthemum, but it's more open. So you can start to see the yellow coloring on the center of a single chrysanthemum spray. So let's get a couple of heads and this time again the bunch, the stem itself is too big to be used together. So I'm going to introduce the stems in the arrangement alongside one another. So it looks like it's a one stem but actually it's three small stems put together. And I've aimed them at different directions. I haven't matched them alongside one another. And if you think of the bunch and the way they would naturally grow, they're facing in different positions. They're different heights. The flowers have different sizes. Don't try and make it really, really perfect and line all the flowers up together. So if I just show you three together, if we line them all up so the heads are matching, it's too severe. It's like a row directing you from left to right. We need to give each flower type its own position within the design itself. Now I have a nice gap here and in between the foliage I can place three little heads and three, we're often told in flower arranging to arrange in threes and fives. Um, and it does apply quite well in traditional flower arranging, but we don't often, we don't do it in all types of floral design. Um, and you know, if you're arranging from home, 
you don't need to stick to the very severe rigid rules because the bunch of flowers that you might have might not have the right quantity of heads within the within the bunch itself so don't worry about it just so now we're going to look at the two stems we've got left i'm going to start with a bigger head this is almost like a spider chrysanthemum that was um, very popular in the 80s which is when i started floral design um, again it's got a fabulous texture the shape is very different to the other chrysanthemums that we've already put in so we get a real variety in shapes and textures and I'm grouping them together again so that you get that emphasis and the colour is completely different to the chrysanthemum alongside it so we get contrast which is really important and what I've also done in this design um, I've thought very much about scale scale and proportion is really important and I've picked flowers that have a very similar size to them and that makes your design flow really naturally and creates rhythm and repetition it makes your eye move through the design naturally if we went and put a huge hydrangea head in here or a very big open garden rose it would be very much out of proportion with the rest of the design and it would become very dominant and very overpowering so think of scale and try and choose flowers that start small get a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger until we get to the main flower which is in this case is the gerbera um, and then you end up hopefully with quite a pleasing floral design so far my flowers are almost sitting on the rim of the container so that if we look under this section here you don't see any of the floral foam or that cellophane that I use to line the container um, right so we've got one little chrysanthemum head in the creamy ivory shade and I think he's going to dot in quite nicely under here and this one is on its own doesn't have any friends don't worry about it too much makes your eye travel quite rhythmically through the arrangement and if I tip it forward you can see how that's coming together really nicely and you might notice that all of the flowers that I've got in this design would be referred to as a round shape I haven't got anything tall I don't have anything spiky nothing with a linear shape to it and that's a good way of learning the basic rules with creating a posy stick to round flower types until you get a bit more confident and then you can start introducing some spiked flowers maybe something like maybe a veronica or a stock now my final flower is the very pretty and delicate little chrysanthemum this is what i would refer to as a santini chrysanthemum it's very small and very very fragile looking but quite robust like all chrysanthemums are and another benefit of a design that's made like this where it's close to the floral foam it means that the water doesn't have to travel too far up the stem so that the flowers tend to last that little bit longer gerberas in particular aren't a great lover of floral foam so they really appreciate being low to the foam it means the water only has to travel an inch or two up the stem and it really does help those flowers stay alive a little longer and gives you real good value for money so this is what i would refer to as a grouped or textured floral design and at this stage i'm finished quite a quick and simple design to do all round grouped and textured posy i hope you've enjoyed that one really good one for beginners and uh, now of course i haven't mentioned the secret facebook group that i've recently introduced you have to search for sharon's innovations group don't just like you have to join you can join you can share photos you can talk to me it's a much easier way of me managing the youtube channel i really want to grow a floral community so that we get to learn from one another and if you're enjoying the tutorials thank you so much for returning time and time again if you're new hit that bell to not be notified every time i upload a new tutorial and please subscribe to the channel it doesn't cost anything but you get to see me and some new floral designs each week so thanks for watching and goodbye for now see you very soon <music>